learned about how to deal with your weak acids. Dealing with your weak bases is actually the exact same with one tiny little change, and that's that instead of dealing with the hydronium or the hydrogen ion, you're dealing with the hydroxide ion. So again, this uh, lineup is, is a little off, the formatting's a little off, uh, but that double arrow goes down here, these guys go to the hydroxide ion, and these guys go to our conjugate acid. So if you have a base, and you dissolve it in water, it's going to read, this is a weak base, not a strong base, this is a weak base. Uh, it's going to reach an equilibrium with the hydroxide ion and the conjugate acid. And the I here still stands for the same initial concentration of the base that it did back when we were talking about acids. And this time, instead of our change being classified as minus X, plus X, and plus X, we're going to use Y. And the reason that we use Y instead of X is because A, we're dealing with bases, and B, I don't want you to get confused. I, I, would, I don't actually mind if you get used to the fact that X is going to be your hydrogen ion concentration and Y is going to be your hydroxide ion concentration. And so I don't want you to get those two mixed up. But it works the exact same way. Um, as long as the KB for the weak base is less than 10 to the negative 3, then we again get to assume that this Y is not big enough to significantly affect the initial concentration. And so in most cases, the KB of a weak base is going to be equal to Y squared over that initial concentration. So just moving right on into an example. What is the pH of a 0.68 molar solution of aqueous ammonia? Uh, and again, if you don't have the KB of ammonia memorized, you're probably going to end up having it memorized just from using it so much. And the fact that the KB of ammonia is the same as the KA of acetic acid. So the first thing is to set up our rice table. And once you get good at these, you will probably find that you don't need to set up the rice table every single time. You can kind of visualize the rice table in your head. Um, but if you ever get to a question and you have no idea where to start, just set up a rice table and, and see what that helps you find. So for aqueous ammonia, ammonia is NH3. We're going to react that with some water. It's not really a reaction, but you know. And we're going to produce the hydroxide ion and the conjugate acid, ammonium. And so that is our reaction. The initial concentrations, well, it says we have 0.68 molar of the ammonia. The water is not going to participate in our rice table. And the reason it doesn't participate is because it is not aqueous. Liquids and solids do not participate in equilibrium. Only the aqueous do, and then the gases if you're dealing with a gas uh, equilibrium. And so the starting concentrations of the hydroxide and the ammonium are both going to be zero. Your change, the base is going to go down by Y, the hydroxide's going up by that same Y, and the ammonium, the conjugate acid, is going up by that same value. And again, if either of these guys up here had coefficients, then those coefficients would follow down to the Y. So our equilibrium is going to be 0.68 minus Y, 0 plus Y, or just Y, and then again 0 plus Y, or just Y. And just like before on the acids, you can ignore the Y because it's not going to be big enough to significantly change that 0.68. And so the KB is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. And so that's going to equal uh, the hydroxide ion concentration times the conjugate acid concentration divided by the base concentration. Or the hydroxide ion concentration is Y. The ammonium concentration is also Y, so we have Y squared, divided by the starting concentration of the ammonium, which was 0.68. And so Y squared 
is going to be equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 times 0.68. And you get 1.22 times 10 to the negative 5. And so we square root both sides. And y is equal to... three point five times ten to the negative three now the question didn't ask you know y is equal to the hydroxide ion concentration and the question asked what is the pH so we're gonna need to solve for the pH well if we take the negative log of y well, that's not going to give us the pH. That's going to give us the pOH. And if you remember from the pH diamond, let's see, I'll go ahead and get that up here real quick. Should be in here somewhere, right here. If you remember on your pH diamond, to get from the hydroxide ion concentration to the pH, you either have to go this way to the hydrogen ion concentration and then to pH, or, and I think this is the easier route, go to pOH and then pH because if the pOH is equal to negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration and pH is equal to 14 minus pOH well putting these two guys together you end up with pH equals 14 if pOH is the negative log, well then we're going to take plus the log of the hydroxide ion concentration. So scrolling back to where we were. And I'm going to go ahead and switch colors again because that's just way fun. Uh, let's see, we'll go down here. pH equals 14 plus the log of the hydroxide ion concentration, which is going to be equal to, let's see, the hydroxide ion concentration was 3.5 times 10 to negative 3, and we get 11.5 is your pH. And actually, we're allowed one more sig fig than that. 11.54. Uh, so that's our pH of this guy. So we're going to classify, this is a little bit of a kind of diversion, classify the following as weak or strong acids or bases. So looking at this first one, chloric acid. Chloric acid is HClO3 from the chlorate polyatomic ion. Well, if you have memorized your strong acids and strong bases, like I've told you to on who knows how many occasions, you will instantly recognize this as one of your strong acids. Now, ammonium chloride. Ammonium chloride is NH4Cl. And you might be looking at that and go, wait, 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 that's a salt. How can that be an acid or a base? Well, to figure out if something is going to be acidic or basic, you have to look at its ions. So NH4 plus and Cl minus is what we're going to end up, or this salt is going to end up ionizing into. And let's look at these two ions and see where they come from. And what I mean by where they come from, if we're talking about a positive ion, then I want to know what base did it come from. And if we're talking about a negative ion, an anion, I want to know what acid did that come from. Well, the ammonium polyatomic ion came from the base ammonia. And ammonia is a weak base. And the conjugate acid of a weak base is going to be dang it, a weak acid. Now let's look at the chlorine ion. Where did the chlorine ion come from? What acid did the chlorine ion come from? Well, it came from hydrochloric acid. And hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. And the conjugate base of a strong acid is actually neutral. And so if you have a weak acid, 
plus a neutral compound, well, then you're going to end up with a weak acid. So now moving on to calcium hydroxide. Get rid of all this so we got some more room to work. Calcium hydroxide. Where there's the bell. My bad. Um, gotta love that bell. Calcium hydroxide is gonna be C A O H two. Again, if you have memorized your weak uh, or your strong acids and bases, you will instantly recognize this as a strong base. Ethyl amine. Um, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and pause this, and I will have to make a part six. Gotta love that.